I am setting up the YouTube live also, sir. Okay. Because lot of audience are there in YouTube. Master intense. Sir, can we start, sir? Yeah, we can. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, is my screen is visible? Yes, yes, visible. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening to everyone. This is Ashok Kumar from CMTI. Uh, I am just sharing a small information about this uh, new series, the lecture series, which is going to come end. On nearly 16 weeks program, we have for planned on infrastructure lecture series. And uh, this was started in 18th November 2020. Uh, because our country, there are a lot of infrastructure projects that are happening. We thought, why can't we bring a small awareness session uh, to the audience so, so that they can start their career in the infrastructure. So we brought a lot many people 
from the industry uh, the experts from the various companies just a, re a recap kind of a thing i am doing who are the speakers and their videos also available in uh, youtube you can watch uh, the youtube also uh, the uh, session was inaugurated by the webinar series was inaugurated by mr b ramaswamy director from uh, fm advisory services uh, this program was uh, is conducted in association with the nine indian nine leading engineering colleges uh, at the institute of technology from bangalore adi chunchunagiri institute of technology from chikmagalu and beris institute of technology in mangalore and dayanand sagar college of engineering uh, bangalore and uh, nitte institute of technology bangalore and uh, rasta center of road technology from bangalore the sona college of technology salem ssn institutions from chennai and uh, svit bangalore okay. here the nine organizations yeah. are... somebody's mic is open <laughs> Hello. Somebody's mic is on. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so nine uh, institutions uh, is supporting this program, and a lot of audience, nearly five thousand plus engineers attended this program uh, past thirty uh, twelve uh, weeks. And today, uh, hello. Somebody. Excuse me. yeah thank you i request audience to mute your mic so that uh, the, it will be easy for the speaker and for the other audience also yeah mr ramaswamy spoke about briefly about what is happening in this industry and uh, he has given an uh, better idea about uh, the future of this industry he has informed that uh, Uh, for india another 20 years so there will be lot of uh, requirements coming in the infrastructure sector he has given a broad outlook you can watch the, his session on day 1 uh, the session number 1 the second session was given by mr prapakaran from uh, uh, lesson and two bro it is about uh, the various opportunities available there the third session is about uh, metro construction we have done on 29th november and the fourth is uh, dr navin has given an idea about pile foundation in uh, infrastructure projects uh, the fifth session and the sixth both are combined two sessions we had 12th and 19th december it is about a payment quality concrete mr uh, nagesh puttaswamy from ultratech he has given a brief idea about uh, the planning and construction aspects of uh, rigid uh, payments in uh, the infrastructure projects especially the pqc has given an idea about the pqc because uh, it is an uh, important element in the construction of the infrastructure and as well a uh, lot of smart city illa nee kuda kodi illa hogadante so this was a wonderful session he requested two sessions because it is a continuous subject so we have given a two sessions fifth and sixth uh, given an idea broad idea about it and uh, we uh, we brought uh, jyoti gupta uh, an architect and a data scientist she has given an idea about uh, urban infrastructure she is working in smart cities and uh, mr sumant kachru it is an inter interesting subject he has given an idea about the uh, digitalization in the quality control of the projects uh, how the digitalization is happening and uh, uh, digitalization is the future so what are the qc points which can be made digitalized and their product he has given this we have done in 9th january and uh, this is one more in important subject uh, building information modeling how it helps uh, infrastructure projects it is uh, uh, done by ema mr bim trainer and consultant and uh, mr sandeep uh, from uh, parsons uh, uae has given uh, an idea about uh, the quantity surveying importance in the infrastructure projects especially where and all it can be which are the areas we need a improvement and uh, how this quantity surveying is important uh, for a infrastructure project how it helps he has given a uh, one hour lecture and uh, the 11th session was uh, mr uh, navin he has again spoke on uh, deep uh, soil testing Uh, importance and the tool session is from mr navin only it is about deep foundations uh, for the way, uh, for the bridges and uh, other areas 
and uh, today's session is uh, from uh, mr sivaraman expert uh, speaker uh, he is from uh, sabik saudi arabia we welcome you sir uh, for this particular program and uh, this is the 13th session happening since uh, the november we have started this series continuously uh, weekly one session we are conducting and uh, i welcome on behalf of cmti Oh, why can't we uh, give an idea about contracts management, which is important for today's engineers as well as because due to a lot of uncertainties, there are changes in contracts we need to bring. Uh, it should be a mutual help between the employer as well as the engineer, how it helps the contracts management and the documentation part. I hope that your lecture will be... Uh, a uh, very good session for the students because it is not much uh, given in the syllabus. So a lot of uh, working professionals as well as uh, engineers attending to, uh, today's session. Guys, you will be getting a e-certificate also. Kindly wait till the end of the session and uh, be interactive. Your questions uh, you can ask in the chat box. This program is live in YouTube as well as in Zoom also. So we will take the questions at the end and uh, allow me to start this program. Good evening to all and uh, welcome to this wonderful program on contracts management. Uh, my colleague Sumit Kumar is going to introduce the speaker to the audience in detail. Yes, over to you, Sumit. Thank you, sir. Good evening to one and all present here. Welcome to today's session. I am Sumit Kumar, PE civil engineer graduate from PDA College, Gulbarga. Presently a student at CMTI. On behalf of Construction Management Training Institute, I welcome you all for today's session on topic Infrastructure Lecture Series. Construction Management Training Institute is a professional organization working towards development of construction professionals through structure training programs through experts from construction industry. CMT is founded by Engineer S.G. Ashok Kumar, sir. Sir is a certified Indian Green Building Council accredited professional certified project management Professional PMI USA, Member Advisory Board IGPC Education, Core Convener IGPC Bengaluru Chapter. Sir started career as junior engineer, having 22 years construction field experience in various projects of industrial, highways, airports, and residential. Construction manager for development of airfield rigid payments in Hyderabad International Airport. Planning manager for Ahmedabad Virangam Highway Project. Zonal head for residential projects. General Manage for Urban Development Projects. Now, I would like to introduce our today's guest, Mr. Mr. Sivaraman Rajendran. Mr. Sivaraman Rajendran is a chartered civil engineer with 26 years of experience providing end-to-end -end solutions in planning, designing, procurement, and execution of projects through EPC, LSTK, and other project delivery models using various contract forms. Sir managed more than 100 million square feet of campus development and fit out projects, including hotels, resorts, restaurants, multiplex, multi story residential, commercial, and public utility projects, IT parks, and RD centers, even hospitals, highways, industrial, etc. Sir, sir is a certified project management professional and a fellow of institution of technical arbitrators. Sir acts as an expert witness in alternate dispute resolution process in India and Saudi Arabia. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sunil. For Thank you, Sumit. Uh, it's uh, over to Mr. Sivaraman Rajendran. Good evening, sir. I welcome on behalf of uh, CMTA once again. Uh, sir, can you enable the video also so that we can watch you? Are you seeing it? My, yes, sir. My screen? Uh, screen is visible, sir, but your video is not enabled. My video is required because yes, I am sir. calling from far away. You may have drops in the video. That's why. No, I no, sir. You can enable. You can enable. It will be helpful for us, sir. I'm, call I'm not from office. This is from my home. Today is a holiday here. So uh, I don't think uh, this will be appropriate uh, to. to Fine, sir. And then it fine, will be sir. sufficient enough for video. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. At the end, after that, after completing the webinar, maybe I will switch on again. Sure, sir. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Sunil, for the introduction. Uh, good evening, fellow engineers. 
welcome to yet another topic which is not generally taught at length in engineering colleges the contract management even today the contract management is not given uh, much importance uh, at a college level at the college curriculum level maybe across the india i, I can say uh, i was told the audience uh, is mainly students and then fresh engineers possibly probably so i had I, I have focused this presentation to audience to to that kind of audience it may be little boring to experienced engineers and this lecture is likely to go for uh, about uh, th uh, one hour to one and a half hours i'll try my best to contain this uh, lecture between 60 minutes to 90 minutes okay and you can interrupt me in case if there is any drop in the voice or uh, the video is not visible please let me know so that i can take corrective action from here okay in today's uh, what what happened one minute yeah in today's session uh, at the end of this session you you will have probably the answers for the questions like uh, what is contract management and the way we have to manage a contract where it fits in the overall project life cycle what is a contract life cycle management who will do this task and what are the obligations of each party in the contract how to do it the clm automation benefits of automation standards and and conventions what are the standards being used and what happens to the future of contract management okay next is the uh, what is contract management before before uh, going for a definition of this contract management let us understand what is a contract have you given any thought that what exactly is a contract in construction industry and in in any other commercial uh, transaction uh, particularly in construction industry the contractor will submit the tender in response to the request for proposal or tender notice when you float the tender the contract will give back the his offer it is called offer the tender submission is called offer when the offer is negotiated and accepted and signed by the owner or the client it becomes a contract so when the offer is accepted it is a contract the accepted offer is a contract and why we should uh, manage it let us see contract management is the process of managing the contract creation execution and analysis to maximize the operational and fin financial performance of an organization money a lot of money involved in it and all these while reducing the financial risk to each party involved not only to the client contractor also has the right to protect his interests and then reduce the financial risk for him so somehow we have to create a win win situation which is very paradoxical in today's environment that is why the contract management is becoming more and more critical and gaining importance organizations encounter an ever increasing amount of pressure to reduce cost and to improve performance by cost as well as the uh, overall performance share values stock values everything so it becomes important to manage the uh, contract and where it fits in a, in a, every project has a project life cycle every project has a life cycle and it's called a project management life cycle this is this is a typical project uh, life cycle it starts from a design phase multiple phases are there in every project design then pre construction where you get the budget approval your project management team is set up and then the way in which you will take the project or the, how how many Uh, tenders you will make it how, in what mode all that uh, pre planning budget uh, acquisition your charter preparation all these will go and the next is the procurement phase where the tendering and then the uh, contracting actually happens and then the construction and building commissioning owner occupancy and finally the project close out this is a typical project life cycle in any construction project or infrastructure project but we are talking about a contract where do you think the contract is uh, fitting when the contract the contract starts and when it completes exactly at the procurement stage uh, after after the pre construction in the procurement stage what is, there are two two uh, subdivisions into it one is the pre contract 
in this phase uh, in this in this stage the contract management team or the client team in 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 coordination with other teams like designer international designers and project management consultants prepare the contract strategy how to packaging the contractor one contractor or multiple contractor and then they pre qualify the contractor then they prepare the tender document collect the, all the do, all the document from other sources and make a tender document and float in the market and in response contractors will submit the tenders will the fill in the tenders with their amounts how much amount they want this is the tender uh, process so earlier uh, earlier last year i think i had given a very long um, lecture about the pre contract and the tender document preparation and so on this is one probably one of the longest lectures i have given about uh, two and a half hours or so it, i think it is still available in youtube you can yes sir yes sir that is available there Yeah, to know more about uh, yeah. this and this is a pre contract once the contract is submitted the tender is submitted to the owners then the owners open it and then they do the uh, analysis of it uh, goes for several rounds of back and forth discussion about the technical clarifications commercial cl clarifications why they quoted what they quoted and all then after at the end of the uh, negotiation financial commercial all that then they enter into a document called a contract that is the end of the pre contract pre contract stage and the beginning of the another phase called post contract stage uh, at this stage um, oh, from the signing of contract till the completion of the contract or till the expiry of the contract till the life of the contract what happens is called contract management here i would like to um, highlight a point that the terms two terms contract administration and contract management they are interchangeably used by mistake there are two there is a difference between these two terms contract administration and contract management in the pre contract stage whatever you are doing that is called a, a contract administration in the post contract uh, stage whatever you are doing that is called contract management this is exactly where the music starts the music starts i refer to music because in any contract there is at least there are at least two parties involved in it and in some rare cases there are more than two parties is multi party agreements are also possible in some cases so a party means uh, two different organizations the organizations are uh, not alone they have their own uh, internal departments internal stakeholders multi level Uh, subdivisions sub organizations uh, and their business verticals and all so uh, different parties are involved at different stages of the tender for example for a contractor if you take while the bid is uh, submitted uh, their business development and the tendering team are involved in that and during the time contract is signed their contract team comes contract administration team comes or contract management team comes and then signs the contract with the uh, signing authority so after that the construction team comes to the site so here over a period of that uh, contract life different teams within the organizations are involved in delivering the uh, objectives of the contract to the other party so what happens everyone comes when they starts um, his own music everyone sings in his own tune that is why i refer the music starts so uh, this is where the real complication starts during the contract uh, then contract has its own life cycle like how project has a life cycle like this contract has a life cycle after the signing of contract that is the beginning birth of a contract is that when when two parties or more parties are signing into an agreement that is the birth of the con contract and then this is the contract life cycle it starts with contract request and then goes reviewing redlining approval execution storage record management search and retrieval audit and reporting and uh, renewal or disposition this is the end of the contract this is how the contract uh, life cycle we can say from the birth to the end of the contract in the contract request stage at the at the end of the negotiation commercial and technical negotiations and um, the parties involved uh, or the the one who has sealed the deal they'll send a request to their own management about it is done we can go with the contract so this is applicable for uh, 
not only to the client organization or consulting organization it is applicable to the contract organization also because each one in the tender doc, in the agreement contract agreement each one's interest needs to be protected or uphold so uh, each each uh, party contract department uh, will send a request to their bosses that we need to sign a contract then all the tender document and the uh, contract terms and condition, the finalized terms and conditions, they are put together to form a contract uh, document and then it is reviewed. And some redlining is also done, highlight the areas where the top management needs to review it critically and then give the approval. Once this is done, the, the approval phase, the top management has to give approval on the uh, reconfirmation on the terms and conditions agreed, the scope of work, the time, the cost, all needs to be agreed between the parties and they sign uh, and they start executing the contract. So after the approval, soon after the approval, they'll sign the contract. And when they sign the contract uh, in, in practice, maybe uh, within uh, three weeks or within four weeks of uh, issuing the letter of award, the moment uh, the contract request is sent, parallelly the letter of award or letter of intent will be forwarded to the from client to the contractor so that uh, we can go ahead with the, we can start signing within this uh, two weeks three weeks or maximum four weeks in some contracts because it is a long procedure to review redlining and then iron out the difference of opinion within the organization and between the organizations it takes some more time that is why uh, there is a time period given in any contract that uh, from the date of letter of award maybe two weeks three weeks or four weeks we have to sign the contract so once the contract is signed, that is the, the execution of the contract starts. So each party has to deliver whatever is agreed, whatever is committed to the other party by way of different deliverables, it is called the contractual obligations. Then the contract will be stored. The original will be stored. If two parties are involved, two originals are made and it is to be signed. Signing the contract agreement is a, uh, like a big function in a bigger organization in the larger projects. So then after that, the uh, whoever has to give an access to it and it will go to uh, site one copy and the uh, legal department one copy, like that the distribution happens and the record management uh, happens during the course of the contract. Both parties will build a lot of documents. So these are called records. Why these are called this, this managed record management is important. During the course of the contract itself, life cycle of the contract, there will be several occasions where there are disputes, there are uh, letter correspondences and then challenges where uh, one party is challenging the other party. So you have to defend your case by way of the uh, past records of what actually happened and why we have done it. So you have to retrieve that uh, search and the retrieval is also important next. Then whenever you get into this kind of uh, situation, you will search and retrieve it. So this also means that your search and retrieval mechanism should be easier so that your response time is within uh, the allowable uh, duration mentioned in the contract. It's not only that, there will be internal and the external audit of the contract practices, whether it is being followed thoroughly as per the uh, contract, uh, the fair practice is being used or the client is somehow uh, thrashing the contractor, uh, throwing his weights around. And then this reporting also will happen to the individual managements. If it is a contra contractor, it will go to the MD of the contractor or if it goes to the owner's uh, client's MD for them to reaffirm that the contract is doing well and then this business deal is going to uh, be a really a win-win situation to either of them. Then at the end of the contractor, either you will renew the contract or once the all the obligations are uh, completed, uh, you, will, you will dispose the contract. Here I have a point to mention that uh, some of you may have a doubt that when the contract actually completes, after completing the building project or after final bill is paid? No, the contract will stay alive until all the obligations mentioned in the contract, contract of each party is served to the other party. Both parties will have some obligation towards other party and until all the obligations are completed by each party to the other party, till then, the contract will be live. Even the building may have completed, the client may have occupied, but still there is an obligation called the defect liability period and then the warranty period, all that. Till such time, even the defect liability period is over, 
for some item the warranty may be 5 years the contract is literally alive till the fifth year until the last of the warranty is completed so this is the uh, legal uh, position of any contract or there is another place another way where a contract can end uh, both parties mutually agree that okay this is not going further well let us part so they have to mutually agree and then they have to by by on paper they have to terminate the contract they have to serve a termination notice to each other only then the contract is expiring so this is how the birth and the death of a contract can be explained okay now we know what is contract and then who will do this contract management now comes the uh, real pain uh, everyone uh, will think uh, that the contract management uh, uh, is something that we can do easily but in large contract you will have a little comfort position where uh, each party will have its own contract management department that drives the contract in large projects but in small projects and medium sized projects we can't afford to have such a big large contract management team within the project management team so what happens maybe one or two persons are involved in that and in further smaller projects there is nobody to deal with it this is one of the reason why a lot of contractual issues are cropping up over the period of time so what happens when there is nobody else is available normally the project manager himself Uh, takes care of this function the contract management uh, function he only reviews uh, the contract obligations and then uh, manages with the client or manages with the contractor the manages with the other party i mean so uh, you know the project manager is always busy with so much of other things day to day chores so what happens uh, he will normally pick up uh, some smart guy in the team a site engineer or a quantity surveyor or maybe a planning engineer and make him in charge of it that is another uh, pathetic situation where without any contract management training uh, the project manager will push someone to that and then to take care of it fortunately or unfortunately if you happen to be that person uh, interested with this kind of uh, contract management role uh, don't feel bad about it you are lucky enough so that you can learn all that by yourself you are fortunate enough to learn Uh, as the beginning point itself because everyone uh, ultimately comes down to money and the, the management of contract uh, decides the profit and the loss of any organization if it is not done thoroughly then you lose money in this project so it, it is a, consider this as an opportunity to learn um, about contract management so that person is uh, normally called a contract manager by by position he may be a contract manager but he may be uh, by by experience he may be a site engineer or in, within the project team he would have served other roles like a quantity surveyor or a estimator or a planning engineer or something like that so he is he going to manage it all alone no uh, he is going to have the support of all other team members within the organization within the project team outside the project team within the organization and to the other party also the same team in the other party also so so he will have three levels of coordination three levels of link um, to manage this contract throughout its life cycle so first of that the most uh, important person is the planning engineer why what what is the interaction with the planning engineer planning engineer has uh, the the detail about the time the estimate uh, all that will be with him so that is also an element of contract time is an essence of contract this is one word you one sentence you will read in all uh, indian and international contract time is the essence of this contract the sentence will be there so you know how important the time is time is now money also time consumes the resources time consumes money so you need to interact with the planning he is the first person uh, most of the time so you interact with him he has all the planning information at what stage what kind of deliverable you have to render to the other party will be there in the plan with the planning engineer it will be available then the qaqc engineer the quality requirement and the quality deliverable or um, uh, quality um, obligations what are the obligations on quality will be known from this uh, qaqc engineer and not only that going forward uh, how many uh, ncrs non compliance reports he has raised 
and what are the quality reports or method statements uh, submitted or it to be submitted. All this information will be available from the uh, QAQC engineer. The other person is a uh, safety officer. Why he's involved? Uh, because um, in EHS also, there are many obligations of a contractor to the owner and owner to the contractor, some basic facilities to be provided to the workers. And uh, from the contractor side, he has to uh, do so many things to ensure safety and security and protect the environment. So there is the EHS department of the contractor and the client, uh, uh, client management uh, will be inter interacting together. And from this uh, safety officer, you will get to know the, whether the other party is serving, rendering the obligations thoroughly as per the contract or not this information from him. The other person is the quantity surveyor or the billing engineer. Uh, gentlemen, my screen is visible. Am I audible? Or am I just uh, talking to the screen? Sir, it is audible. I am online. OK. Um, if at all anything, I will let you know, sir. I am with you. OK. So the uh, next person is the quantity surveyor or a billing engineer. He has most vital information about the cost and uh, quantities, whether uh, there are some milestones where uh, a stage should be achieved or uh, so much quantity should be achieved within this time, whether the, whether the other party is doing the work as per that or not. This information is available with the quantity surveyor and the billing engineer will give how much bill is so far paid and then how much uh, mobilization advance is given to the contractor, how much is recovered. This information is available with the quantity surveyor. The next person is the finance or account. Uh, in, in both uh, parties, uh, there are some uh, taxes we have to pay to the contractor or we have to add to the contractor's bill and we have to pay to the government and the contractor before raising the next invoice, he should provide the proof of having paid the taxes and duties for that until the previous bill. This is one of the document required to be submitted along with the following bill. So this is uh, this was part of uh, one contractual obligation in one of the building projects I worked. So this kind of information, finance related information, financial obligations, whatever is there, whether the other party is meeting to it. If, uh, for example, if uh, 21 days or 28 days, the payment should be released by the owner to the contractor if it is released or not. If it is not released, and then, then finance should be immediately sent to the contract manager so that uh, he will initiate some kind of notice to the other party. Okay, the other person is the document controller. In Indian projects, this uh, particular role is not there. Uh, which is uh, shared among all other uh, the rest of the engineers. Quality document will go to quality engineer and then bill will go to the quantity surveyor. But in international, uh, this is a vital role called uh, document controller. This will enhance the information flow and control the information flow within the project organization when the project is big. Um, so uh, the contract manager will very frequently interact with the document uh, controller about uh, whether the document submittals are done on, on as per the contractual uh, periods or it is exceeding and how many is uh, scheduled, how many is submitted. So all this information will be there. This is uh, this picture shows uh, he, what he is doing within the project team. And within the organization also, some, sometimes he has to interact. And across the organization, he may have to interact with the finance people of the other party also sometimes. And, most of the times uh, to ensure that uh, the contract is effectively followed or not. Uh, how he said, here I have to mention certain things. You see um, the contract manager is interacting with so much other people, but none of them is doing any work for him. Got it? Nobody is doing any work for him. What are they doing? Each of these engineers or each of the other uh, project team member, they have done their work as a result of their work, they have collected some work, they have created some work performance data and they have classified this, they have restructured it and saving it in the form of information in their files, folders or in, in their desktops, computers. So here you, you'll come across a few, few terms as work performance data and work performance information and work performance report. These three things uh, are, 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 are the terms used uh, uh, frequently here. The work performance data is the raw data, which is the, which is the result of the, each individual's work. 
and when the raw data is put it in some kind of tabular form and it becomes the information and this information is arranged the purpose specifically it is arranged in the in the form of a structured way it is called in relation to some other information some other base information that is called work performance report this uh, they, this clarity you should have work performance data and work performance information and work performance report you want to know what is the by, by way of uh, uh, some example uh, 10 m mm cube concrete is poured today so this is the data raw data this has no, this has no meaning for any contract manager or anyone else other than that uh, uh, concrete engineer but if he goes and updates his computer uh, which says yesterday there was about uh, uh, 15 m cube and today uh, 10 m cube so totally 25 m cube this is called information so it has some relate, relation some continuity with some other data raw data and it provides some information and when it goes to the contract manager or when the planning engineer is preparing a report uh, in relation to the base so as of today we should have poured 50 m cube of concrete and then whereas uh, yesterday 10 today 15 only 25 m cube is poured so far as per the schedule we should, by this today we have achieved 50 m cube so 50 percentage is the rate of achievement uh, the strike rate for the prog progress of concrete work is only 50 percentage this is called project uh, the work performance report so all these will interact between this so the in, only the information flow is happening between the people it is not only that uh, only the planning engineer is giving the information or the safety engineer is giving the information to the contract manager the uh, information can flow the other way around also those who have followed my earlier lectures on uh, project planning uh, planning management and all uh there i told that the planning engineer is responsible to create the project report and now here uh, it may you it may look that it is conflicting that i am telling the contract manager will prepare the report uh both are right because each report has its own audience if the report is not uh, all reports are not prepared for everyone else it's not for public consumption like a newspaper each one will is looking for something in every report so the reports are customized to suit the end users so the the one who is going to use the report for interpretation for approval for any action to suit his requirement only the report is prepared so the contract manager also will prepare report the project in, uh, planning engineer also will prepare the report but two are two different audience with the two different purpose and here you can see that the contract manager uh, every month or every week he will give a report to the planning engineer also planning in, for this report will become a feeding information to the planning engineer to prepare his monthly report and send it so it is all intervening like this so a lot of give and take takes place between the uh, stack, internal stakeholders and external stakeholders also hope i have i have i have explained adequately about the information flow uh, what is happening during the contract management okay so what actually we are doing as i told you each party has committed to the other party to render some services in the form of um, some deliverables the deliverables can be classified as uh, contractual obligations and it is cl classified as uh, many different varieties so based on the the deliverable may be a document submittal a method statement or a project schedule or a revised schedule or uh, the project s curve or uh, the resource schedule something like this the, the this is also an oblig obligation within um, uh, 3 weeks after signing contract the the contractor has to submit a detailed level 4 project schedule to the uh, project management consultant or the owner so this is called one obligation from the contractor so it can be a document a simple document submittal like the project schedule or i told you or it can be some form of action so within this date what actions they have to do avail the building permit to within this uh, duration uh, avail the temporary generator within this duration the, the obligations or deliveries deliverable may be some form of actions and some form of organizational uh, obligations are also there for example in the mer mergers and acquisition projects uh, you, you may have to uh, uh, some some obligations may be organization 
and the one more example is uh, hiring a subcontractor or a sub consultant uh, for a project this is also an organization publications and it can be a product or result uh, a product in the form um, the delivery of some equipment uh, or achieving a roof level or achieving the foundation completion of foundation level uh, is the result so like this uh, it can be our uh, completion of the as built drawing or completion of the uh, factory acceptance test something like that this is a called a product based or result based obligations some of uh, the obligations are legal uh, which means uh, the contract has to register for uh, esi and pf for their labors and then they have to file uh, an application with the labor department and get the labor license to work in that project so there are some legal obligations like this and commercial obligation uh, the contractor has to submit a number of commercial document something like um, the bank guarantee at different levels he has to submit the bank guarantee whenever the bank guarantee is ex expiring or nearing uh, the expiry date upon the notice the contractor has to renew the bank guarantee for a revised value this is the uh, commercial obligation it can be in any form and uh, communication uh, uh, obligations this is one of the important obligations why uh, in any contract as i told you the obligations are there when the other party is failing to meet the obligation failing to render the service uh, failing to produce the document submit the document failing in action the other party has the is entitled to claim uh, the reimbursement or the for compensation the other party is entitled to claim the compensation for the losses caused by the other party so this is the uh, contractual obligation this is the this is the recourse so how did they become eligible uh, entitled you have to notify that on this date uh, this con as per this class number this contractor has to submit this document this is not submitted or this contractor has to submit this uh, test which is not uh, conducted at site or they're not delivered at site because of which uh, the owner is uh, incurring some losses by way of that they and you don't have to mention what exactly is the loss and all you just mention that you have not uh, satisfied your contractual obligation uh, which is impacting our business as a whole in the the magnitude of which is being worked out however we reserve the right to claim the compensation from you at a later date so this is just a notice two line is also enough so the contract calls for certain notices to be served on the other party when the other party is defaulting to render the obligations so when if you don't serve the notice you become ineligible to claim uh, for that entitlement so because of this reason the communication is so important this obligation we have to if you become a contract manager this obligation you have to thoroughly follow it from start to beginning and environmental for example the waste disposal uh, how he has to dispose the waste there are some guideline given by the district administration he has to follow it he can't throw just on the road side uh, again it will come back to the client and then the, the the government will penalize the client and the client again they transfer this uh, penalty amount to the contractor so for this the environmental this is an it's called an environmental obligation then the quality parameters are there the whatever uh, build you, the the structure you build or the uh, road you build it should meet certain quality uh, requirements as per the contract and the performance contract there are uh, some facility performance for example if the chiller is supplied and it should uh, give us uh, some uh, 20 degrees plus or minus 1 degree temperature and uh, on test it is not found uh, reaching this temperature it is giving 24 plus or minus 1 degree then it is a performance of failure failure of performance obligation so these are the uh, typical classifications under which the obligations are to be rendered um, okay sounds too much isn't it how we can manage all this too many things at a time and uh, what i had given is only glimpse of it so the contract will have some 600 uh, 700 pages of information including the technical specification how are we going to manage it it's like a uh, swimming in the sea searching for a land so we are giving some 10 uh, step uh, guideline how you can manage uh, starting from scratch this will be very helpful for 
young engineers like you when when you grow up in the uh, career ladder number one uh, read and understand the contract clauses contract clauses means numbers contract uh, every every obligation is numbered serially numbered in all contract document so you have to memorize certain classes very frequently they are used they are operated and this is the most important and time taking and frustrating task i can say because the contract document is about 600 700 pages at least 200 page in a small uh, building contract uh, technical specification general specification particular conditions uh, special conditions like this uh, work instructions uh, ehs document and the environment management document and planning itself uh, the, the company where i work has a uh, some 200 page document how to make a project schedule and how the project performance is measured project progress is measured another 200 pages so uh, you have to spend a lot of time patiently you have to spend if you really want to be thorough in contract this one you have to do it without any compromise so you have to spend a lot of time in reading it and then uh, making you understand what what each class means what they want to convey and what they are expecting and what they want to convey to each party so this you have to understand once you understand then you can create excel sheet and list down the obligations of each party at stage by stage after signing the contract within one week what should happen within one uh, one month what should happen within two months what should happen uh, 45 days within 60 days within 100 days what should happen at every stage what is the obligation of each party towards other party you have to list down this this may be 200 300 even 500 uh, starting from the preliminary project schedule to uh, labor report to the asbel drawing and warranty guarantee document so it starts from there and ends with the submission of warranty guarantee document and then the punch list attended punch list and all the document type may change but is a too much of a obligation for each party to be rendered to other party you have to list down probably the excel sheet is the right one in today's scenario every site is having a computer and prepare a tracking system of each obligation to each party it should be reviewed on a daily basis certain things to be reviewed on a daily basis certain things to be reviewed on a weekly basis certain things on a monthly basis certain things on a stage wise uh, deliverables is also also there so when the project is achieving that stage that obligation should be rendered to the other party so you have to thoroughly uh, keep on watching to it and we are all human beings we can't memorize everything we have all limited memory so what is the right way you put up some uh, date uh, tickers as a tracking system uh, and some prompting system you have to prepare one prompting system you make a note of it at on such date or two days before if tomorrow is the deadline and today or yesterday it should have reminded you like this this is possible in excel also or you can have your own uh, in a, in a new smartphone you can uh, calendar entries or in outlook uh, you can make uh, calendar reminders like this uh, outlook it, it has a, a task manager outlook task manager is there there you can copy paste the task and then assign a date for that it can give you prompt you one day or uh, two days or one week ahead of it uh, you can um, give a notification from the computer itself that you need to track this it is called the prompting system for the each deliverable each deliverable you can create it so this is the homework you are doing to rent the contract for uh, the uh, till the rest of the contract life cycle and send out notification to the other party when the other party is not meeting the deliverable obligations and this is the time you have to send out the notice uh, notification to the other party i just explained to you why we have to send the notification to the other party not to lose your entitlement to claim for your losses from the other party you have to notify the other party guys you have not done it so i may claim you i reserve the right to claim um, for my damages i don't know now how much but uh, it is being worked out but we will claim at a later stage we reserve the right to claim at the later stage it is not even saying that we will claim that is not the right language so we reserve the our right to claim probably you may just uh, considering the business relationship you may even uh, just uh, give up also without claiming also when the amount is very less you may even give up 
so you you will not say in, the, in your letter you have to manage a language also in that you will not say i am going to claim so you say i will reserve my right i may claim or i may not claim like this you have to write the wording and critically follow claims and disputes this is another uh, uh, important uh, area uh, where uh, the, where the companies uh, make or break situation can happen and so compa- some companies uh, were unable to move further and then they left the job as it is and then got bankrupted also cases are there i'll, I'll give you some more examples also claim uh, you will not do the claim uh, but for that uh, specialists are there legal teams are there claim management teams are there claim specialists are there certified claim managers are there uh internally also then externally also some guys are there you can hire a company to make a claim on behalf of you prepare the claim on behalf of you and you can submit to the owner uh, contractor uh, yes owner so uh, submit to the other party in general but you will not do it as a junior person you will not do it you don't have the knowledge or experience expertise with you unless you are certified claims manager uh, but you should maintain it manage it and uh, which date which type of claim is done and what is the status of the claim and within how many uh, times uh, how many days before the owner has to dispose the claim whether to approve it or decline it with the justification and all so this you need to track it and what is dispute what is the difference between claim and dispute when the claim uh, becomes a dispute a claim a contract is making a claim or one party is making claim on to other client also can make a claim on the contractor for delays delay damages losses and all either party can make a claim on other party uh, unless if it is uh, prohibited uh, specific clauses or something but generally each party has the right to make a claim on other party and any claim if it is not settled uh, before the end of the uh, physical completion it becomes a dispute so uh, that also need to be tracked there are different mechanisms uh, when uh, when the dispute arises when you, when you hit the dispute there are different mechanisms either by way of litigation if it takes a very long time and there are alternate dispute resolution uh, met- resorting methods are there which is called adr uh, mediation arbitration conciliation something like that there are different uh, um, alternate dispute resolution uh, methodologies are there again you will not do it like a claims management this dispute resolution teams are also there lawyers possibly probably lawyers will come from your team uh, from your company to uh, make it happen uh, an example i don't think that uh, your company is too big or uh, you can play around with the other party that the other party cannot make a claim on you somehow you can manage it uh, throwing your power might and all never think like that i'll give you a classic example which recently you could have heard a uh, kane energy uh, case with the government of india heard this name kane energy they are the scotland based petrochemical petroleum export uh, company they were doing business in india and uh, they did some practice i don't know what happened but the uh, indian government uh, slapped an income tax of uh, 1.4 billion us dollars more than 10000 crores 10400 crores they have in 2011 it happened 10 years before it happened but they have retrospectively which means from 2006 they calculated this amount then they slapped the amount income tax uh, uh, notification sent kane energy did not accept this it's a small company from scotland compared to indian government might that company is nothing but uh, they were trying to go for an arbitration within india but the indian arbitration laws at the time was not uh, comfortable not having enough provision and clarity to manage this kind of uh, things even now the uh, the latest amendment of uh, arbitration act is still in the parliament it was already a- approved in the lok sabha waiting for rajya sabha approval so even today the, uh, the 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 indian contract act is not on par with international standards so what they did uh, they did not choose to have the run the arbitration here in india they went to netherland they, there is a permanent court of arbitration in netherland the hague the place is hague so there they filed the uh, arbitration complaint and the award arbitral award was in favor of kane energy 
that whatever Indian government made it, it is not right. They have to return the money. In the meantime, what happened uh, in the stock exchange, the government of India confiscated all the shares and they started selling the shares also uh, to recover the money from Cairn Energy. So Indian government went to that extent. But they already brought the um, arbitral award from the International Court of Arbitration saying that uh, the Cain Energy should get uh, money from Indian government. How much? 1.2 billion US dollars. It's about a little over 8,000 crores. And Indian government still had some uh, apprehensions and they were thinking that they can challenge this in the same International Court of Arbitration or uh, they can um, appeal for it. Either they can challenge or they can go for appeal. So this was taking long time and uh, last month, uh, Kane Energy has filed um, a lawsuit in one of the district courts in America. You see, this is from where? From India, it went to Netherlands. From Netherlands, uh, it went to America. In the small district court, they went and put it because they have the international lawyers. And even in Scotland, the law, the local law uh, is not... Uh, that unbiased or uh, may not uh, accommodate this kind of disputes, the arbitral law. So that is why they have gone to America and they filed in small district court, they filed a, a litigation complaint. So in that award itself, it is mentioned that the Indian government cannot go for appeal or a challenge. So normally this kind of sentence will take place only when the arbitration uh, committee is thorough that it cannot be challenged. So now the Indian government has to pay no other choice. So you see where it ended, a small company is uh, taking um, 8,000 8, crores, Indian government has to pay at least a minimum. So this is one classic example why this dispute and claim has to be carefully and thoroughly critically followed and reviewed and closed before the matter of assumes and present propositions. Next, involve all stakeholders. Uh, this is a humongous task. The managing contract is humongous task. No one is that expert to manage it all alone. So wherever possible, as we, I have shown in the interactive uh, picture, how the interaction takes place like this, you have to take the assistance, help and support of all other stakeholders so that your contract uh, um, management will become an easier task, not to kill yourself on uh, hectic uh, schedules. So particularly you need to take uh, the legal uh, opinion, uh, legal team's opinion. Because uh, for, you see the contract document, I told you 700, 600 pages. Uh, each document comes from different people. The drawings come from architect, the structural design calculations come from structural engineers and other engineering team. And the technical specification comes from CPWD or a CSI Construction Specification Institute. Uh, like this, each document comes from a different party. Uh, EHS document comes from EHS uh, department and your quality comes from your uh, QAQC department. Like this, uh, it's a combination of uh, different sources you make a contract document. Each document will talk a different language and only lawyers know the art of but establishing a logical relationship between these two documents and bind it together to talk a common language as one contract. It's just after all, it is only English. You may think that it's only English. Uh, we can review it. We cannot. Lawyers make, so they introduce certain words, certain sentences, they reword certain sentences, and they make it, uh, they, they create a relationship to among all these documents so that uh, no conflict between the document or uh, any, any miss out or gap, which may lead to misinterpretation of the contract. In case of any award, uh, arbitration, the benefit of doubt always will go to the contractor because the contractor is the one who invests money upfront and waiting to recover it. So he is the party already lost, invested money. So on that basis, any benefit of doubt always will go to the contractor. Internationally, this is the practice. So you, you have to make a, a contract very robust by involving the legal team. Before signing the agreement, the legal team has to go around and then try to make it uh, to bind it together to talk as a one one contract and initiate and effect amendments. Change is an inevitable part of any project. Whatever meticulously you make the planning and the estimation, change will definitely happen. That is why the Project Management Institute has a different 
procedure itself as a, a separate procedure as a change control board change management protocol is, itself is there so which means the organization recognize this change we have to recognize this change and not to lose the opportunity or not to uh, incur into losses we have to initiate and uh, effect the change orders when the change order is effect it will definitely touch hit one or more contractual obligations maybe either the cost will increase or the time will increase or both will increase at least one or the scope will uh, increase at least one or two of uh, the contractual obligations will be affected so what you need to do because of this change you have to make an amendment to that obligation that it is not uh, 18 months it is 24 months like that you have to make an amendment uh, to that okay then initiate uh, closure or renewal of contract as i told you there are only two occasions where the contract will uh, contract will close one after the completion of all obligations from all parties or by way of a a, a definite uh, pre closure agreement signed by both parties mutually agreed termination of contract so in some cases what happens at the end of the defect liability period the owner may choose to engage the same contractor for maintenance also facility management so what happens at that time the contract the same contract will be renewed with a renewed terms of contract so that is also possible instead of going for a new new contractor new procurement cycle which is another four months time if the client doesn't want to lose the time on uh, appointing another contractor they can go for renewal of the same contract with revised terms and conditions that is also possible as long as uh, both parties agree for this okay this is one then the last one is the report the status and concerns uh, like i told um, you will have many bosses and every boss will have his own interest in the project either benefit influencing the project or getting influenced by the project so what they are looking at each report is different from person to person the stakeholder to stakeholder just to suit individuals requirement you have to curtail certain information add certain information not all information should go to everyone so you have to customize the report and then re- request the concern the quality of solution depends on the type of question you ask so you should know that art by experience it comes to you uh, it can come only through experience so you should be uh, making the raising the concern and allow point or uh, pinpoint the issues so that uh, he gets immediate an- attention and gives the solution for it so this is one art this is this is one of the um, guideline important guideline which you need to follow is that all is that the end of it no again go back to point number 1 and start over again so which means there is no end to all, all these 10 points until either of the two conditions satisfied the contract is terminated in the midway or all the obligations are satisfied till such time you have to keep on reviewing repeating all these 10 points again and again and again some on a daily basis some on a weekly basis some on a monthly basis and some on the stage wise basis so here you can see that so many things you are also not doing any work what you are doing actually you are retrieving the information classifying the information and then converting the information interpreting the information so which means you are doing these things repetitively as i as this arrow shows that you have to repeat the same process which means you are doing a repetitive work your work is a cyclical same work you are doing again and again so you may think that why if the same thing is done again and again why you can't um, automate it how to automate uh, this is it possible is it possible yes you are already doing some kind of automation see in the point number 3 you are preparing a tracking system in point 4 you are designing devising a prompting system for deliverables you don't trust your memory uh, so you are uh, what you are doing you are already creating uh, some kind of prompting system some kind of automation crude automation is there why we can go for a full fledged automation so this is possible so there are certain things which you can automate it contract uh, creation can put in the workflow so that 
each party can review and then it goes into cycles contract creation can be made in as part of the workflow and you can use contract templates uh, uh, letter templates forms like a fedic form or jct form ready made form you can put it in your system as you can embed in your system any contract uh, you can only fill uh, only the first party second party and what are the variables in the contract obligations only those things you will correct it and then you correct only the special conditions so that the rest of the document is the same thing followed in every contract so this is one way of uh, contract template to using it then the approval process can be put it in the workflow that if uh, the you are not approving it uh, two days then it will go to your manager then it goes to his manager like this and the e signature of uh, the uh, uh, contract also is possible the contract signature normally done by the signing authority who is uh, who is generally a general manager or vice president or um, project director or something so these people are already busy and then you make them sign uh, like a imposition 600 pages it becomes a tedious task and nowadays we are using a rubber stamp also but uh, still more uh, easiest process is the docu sign if you use the this package software it will uh, cap scan the signature it will just print it on each page the pdf file also so it's within minutes within seconds it can do it and the uh, contract search the you can use search engines uh, there were different depths of searches there different kind of searches there so that instead of physical document you can browse through the physical document you could have noticed in uh, construction sites where the contract manager or planning engineer inserts a white color uh, strip uh, the notepad post it pad if the contract is 600 pages in all the 600 pages he, he will have the post it note so what's the point in having it uh, a parallel one so it takes uh, hours and hours to search for a particular information if you put it everything in the system the search becomes easy and takes less time and alerts and reminders as you told in uh, did, did in uh, um, microsoft uh, excel or outlook this can be done in your embedded in your uh, contract management system itself CLI, CLM, Contract Life Cycle Management System. Then you can determine who should access what kind of information. So access restrictions can be done so that uh, data security is maintained. And the report generation, every planning engineer or the contract manager spends considerable time creating a report. Certain reports, uh, daily report you have to make, monthly report, weekly reports are there. In other than that, some ad hoc reports, the top management, If they suddenly want to venture something or they come for a site visit, sudden reports they ask. These are these are called ad hoc reports. So instead of spending enormous time on making reports, if you automate it with a few key button, you can generate the report. What kind of report? It is possible. And when you go to a little advanced level of automation, you can the contract clauses. instead of searching by classes they can have class library so that you type the heading and then the re, all the related classes will appear and then the guided creation instead of uh, you writing pages and pages of uh, contract document uh, the uh, response letters uh, what uh, this can generate the response letters for you and then you can fill in whatever the information is you want to override and then you can send that letter so this is a guided uh, creation what now you don't know what action to be taken and the computer itself will suggest in this condition you refer this class you refer that class and all it can guide you uh, for further action this is guided uh, creation is possible then integrate uh, multiple contracts so a project can have multiple contracts uh, interrelated contracts will be there and then create a contract collaboration and you are working uh, within your team or within your organization the contract manager has to deal with the other party also very closely so you can create a collaborative work environment it becomes transparent and becomes more effective in this kind of covid situation where contactless uh, contract management is being practiced then hierarchy in the approval levels also you can give it when approval is not given in two days the it will go to one level one senior level like that you can create it so that uh, the all the task is completed within the time then the parent child contract uh, hierarchies can be done a contract can have multiple contracts within it it is also possible in, in some remote cases where um, multi level contracts are there so uh, a parent uh, child relation should be maintained within the contract without any flaw that is possible when you automate the contract system and the complaints check this complaints to contract complaints as well as the um, uh, 
legal complaints and government complaints also can be automated put it in, put it in that when the building plan approval is expiring then 15 days before you can approach the government again to extend the building planning permit or something like that so these are the little advanced levels of uh, automation and here uh, in this picture we see what are the advantages of automation uh, to sum up the earlier two slides easy for storage and the systematic categorization of information data security is maintained the clarity is given to the document and then version control is also possible whenever you effect a change order and then the amendment is given so the amendment one is completely a new version of a contract document so it is possible to have different versions also version control is possible and the filter and searches as i told you and notification to the other party when the other party is defaulting um, from the obligation okay and these are uh, some of the uh, contract management uh, or clm software available in the market today there are at least 100 software and these are the one uh, most commonly used in the in the all project sites in dubai and uh, in, in european world so i thought i should share some information some names so that you become conversant in future whenever you go to work okay so when we automated this is the end of it or uh, what is there any codes and standards international hello ashok am i still there yes sir i am available yeah so i was just listening you are giving parent child contract and all it is very new to me i was just listening yeah codes is, is there any international code or standard for contract management yes it is i don't uh, i have not come across any code for that but there are many standards available and each organization can have their own standards and each government department can have their own standards and here uh, there is an organization called ncm national contract management association based in america and they are giving uh, they have created a contract uh, management standard this is a Uh, well known company across the world and they are giving some certifications also in contract management certified con- you can become a certified contract manager but the exam is 5 hours this is one reason why i am hesitating to take this examination if you are keen enough to become a contract specialist this is a recommend i recommend this certification like a project management body of knowledge the ncma has released a contract management body of knowledge also this is the study material for that uh, Uh, certification examination and this is called the gold standard in uh, contract management i can say like uh, uh, pmi has become a, a gold standard for project management and this is uh, equivalent in cont- contract management i can say and the british government has given a contract management uh, a professional standard uh, for their government projects and the american government has uh, given their uh, government contracts they have given a guideline for how to approach it and the department of transportation each state has their own contract management manual 50 states have 50 different contract management manuals there are some common thread but they have different uh, approaches different requirements like that okay then uh, when we talk about the uk uh, us what about our country in india the cpwd central public goods department has their works manual every year the work manual works manual is uh, released and then uh, that the contract management is part of this works manual you go to it a few chapters deal with the contract management and contract administration also a few chapters deal with that so it's very thorough and this is a most authentic document uh, uh, for contract management in india as far as india is concerned and world bank is releasing some document about the uh, contract management because world bank is funding a very large infrastructure project for the public uh, usage so they are very keen about how their money is being spent prudentially or the whether the fair practices are being used in uh, managing the contract uh, like they want to ensure it that is why all world bank funded project they have to follow this contract management procedure to satisfy their funding So this is one of their requirement prerequisite for their funding so so this is one document you can go through it these are all freely available in the internet and the federation of uh, international consulting engineers 
they have given a suit of contract fidic suit of contract they have the red book they have green book yellow book silver book all that they have for each uh, type of contract and each type of contract the the contractor's obligations are different to the owner so each parties uh, have some obligations what kind of obligations in each color of contract it is given in this uh, book they have uh, multiple uh, standards multiple forms contract forms and uh, the rics royal institute of chartered uh, surveyors they have their own uh, standards on contract administration um, so as i told you these terms are interchangeably used in some places still it is a very good uh, manual it is also uh, available in the internet when you become a member also you can get a authorized version of this and the other uh, uh, contract management certification is given by construction specification institute again from usa this organization is giving some certification in contract management also and they have this is the study material for this construction contract administration practice guide this is a study material for their contract management certification this is also from america and uh, most of the international specifications they are only setting it for they give a certificate course for construction specification also so write your specification there are uh, certified specification writers in saudi arabia so they are the certifying authority for specification okay so is it the end of it or uh, what do we do with that is that any future only this much there is future of contract and we can't stop here so we are as we are looking at more and more cost optimization uh, improve the performance improve the efficiency and there is a there is a bright future but in another dimension uh, the dimension is changing with it now the artificial intelligence the words which you have been hearing only in software industry and remotely in some cases in manufacturing industry uh, now it is finding its way into construction industry also so because one reason unlike the actual construction where a lot of labor force is involved in building a structure this contract management as you have seen from this presentation that uh, most of it is uh, like office work and then uh, repetitive work in nature Uh, and um, see dealing with uh, la large volumes of information so that is why there is a possibility that ai could be uh, with seamlessly absorbed in contract management uh, how the bim was absorbed in the design phase of the project like this this is other end we can we can involve we can engage employ artificial intelligence in contract management there are uh, three main advantages of uh, engaging artificial intelligence in contract management is automated compliance each party don't have to go with the lens whether it is done or not because machine is doing it you are teaching the machine how to do it and uh, reduced cycle times the response times can be further reduced so that the operational efficiency is as overall cost is saved this may look a little tricky you have this is a balancing act between cost and uh, the cost savings as uh, and the initial investment and the hard work you make it to make it work so which means uh, you should have some kind of uh, homework done initial investment to be done and based on that you can take a call whether the cost savings is there or not but overall it is going to be certainly saving a lot of money for that uh, when we use artificial intelligence so when is artificial intelligence can we teach contracts to the computer is it possible can we teach yeah every organization is some stage of data handling how they handle the information and how they interpret store create the information share the information it differs from company to company but all of them all the companies are falling some level one of the five levels which i am going to show you number one when you when you are looking at uh, what happened when you wonder what happened and then you do some kind of a descriptive analysis and then when you re when your response is very reactive for example the contractor has written a letter and then you wondering what has happened why suddenly this letter is coming from a contractor and then you write blah 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 this is not acceptable by us this is as per this contract uh, this is called reactive 
response this is one level and the next level is why did it happen so now you started thinking after maybe one or two instances of what happened now you started thinking why it happened and you start doing some kind of diagnostic analysis and then same reactive response but this time you have built up your own yeah. system uh, yeah. information open, management uh, system see felicious you give me pmis project management information system okay this is second level third level is what can happen you think little bit further based on the past experience and do some proactive analysis and do the predictive response this is third level fourth level is what should i do you ask the computer what should i do now then the it is it is being a pretty prescriptive analysis computer will prescribe you the system will prescribe you what you need to do at this situation then that is prognostic approach this is the fourth level is it all there is one more where to where to go from here you ask the computer system where to go from here further optimization what to do then it is called cognitive analysis and here only comes the machine learning and artificial intelligence okay all the construction companies or for any other any business organization in the world will follow in one of these categories one of these five categories unfortunately in construction industry 99% of the construction industry is in category 1 and 1% of the construction industry companies are in the category 2 so we have a long way but still there are some uh, front runners four runners they have ventured into uh, teaching the computer about contract and then they are successfully using it demonstrating it and it is being practiced in uh, arabian gulf majority of them are in uh, Uh, in in uh, uae dubai at least uh, at least 100 projects are there in dubai which follow this artificial uh, intelligence in their uh, contract management so going forward what are the advantages in that what are the opportunities in this when i say this um, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning it takes a lot of time in pre planning it and uh, the the backward integration i can say that that's the right word you have to do some backward integration which means the kind of organizations which you work with or you partner with they also should have the similar mindset of um, going to artificial intelligence and they should be um, uh, well enough to invest in this kind of software and uh, the platforms collaboration platforms otherwise it is not going to work for you this is, is going to take a long time but it will definitely there they are definitely in few years from now the rate at which uh, it grows the automation grows and the um, the bim is occupying it the digit, digital twin is uh, now coming up so i see in another uh, 10 years time this part at least uh, the ai would have improved uh, considerably and the opportunities are you can have a super search search will give you only the uh, related uh, word within the document or within the folder or within the computer a related word but a super search will search for different type of document with the same word autocad file will be there pdf file will be there excel sheet will be there notepad files will be there everything will be thrown onto the desk uh, desktop for your re- review and you can pick up whatever you want all connected information will be available in one place and next is the deep search there is a lot more difference between the super search and deep search the deep search means uh, for example in uh, you you type a word transformer in super search it will give you all documents related to transformer the shop drawings related to transformer or the, uh, the mom's and the uh, other drawings the submittals data submittals the quality test quality report ncr safety incident happened at the transformer yard everything will come to your uh, search result but deep search in one of the drawings it may not have transformer as part of the transformer is not the drawing but it may be some other drawing and you have written that the transformer yard you have to include this and all you have written the comments in the shop drawing that also will bring it that is called a deep search so too much difference between super search and deep search it can read the each and every line 
in the sharp drawing comment and in one comment which is not related to the drawing may not related to the transformer yard but you have written the comment sheet you have written transformer so that also it will bring this is this is called a deep search this is possible with artificial intelligence and then status dashboards i'll show you a screenshot of the status dashboard and then purpose centric uh, progress report as i told uh, each report will have different audience and then different kind of information needs to be presented to each of them then uh, deliverable tracking this is this is mechanized you know that uh, from excel sheet we can go to deliverable tracking with the ec1 and then contract analysis now we can teach the computer to read the contract document and then classes also as we have seen earlier the class library this is what uh, the the contract analysis you can analyze each and every contract how far this is the contract is performing how much uh, uh, obligations it has served so far and as per this project stage how much shop drawing should have been approved but how much they submitted how much sample should have been approved how much they submitted so based on this it will analyze the contract and then hi highlight you your legal team and so that uh, legal team and your contract team management team so that they can take uh, proactive steps to rectify it and bring back the project into track and claims management as i told you this artificial intelligence claim management is uh, very very vital because every claim needs to be supported with uh, uh, hundreds of pages of uh, information with the interrelationship and then uh, you have to support your claim otherwise the claim will be rejected so the artificial intelligence comes in handy in collecting the co connected information even if the document title is not matching but it will be connected somewhere or there some mom somewhere agreed so that also it will pull out and then bring as a supporting document there it becomes a uh, very very essential this artificial intelligence in managing the claims and the guided response it can generate its own um, it, its own um, letters yeah. if the contractor has written you a letter referring to some classes the con computer can read the classes and then it will suggest you uh, which class you have to refer to response to this letter and then it can give you a draft uh, letter also it can present on the screen a draft letter with one click you can send that letter or you can override uh, with some information add some information line then edit it and then you can send it also this is called a guided response also possible then the sentiment analysis this is another very innovative uh, thing which uh, i came to know very recently what is the every contract ha contractor has some cultures and sentiments so for example if a contractor is always referring to some particular class extra claim extra claim extra claim so this con the computer will analyze uh, if, if he has written about 120 letters in a year it will analyze all the 120 letters and then it will read the language used by the contract the party the other party what kind of language he has used any abusive words or any disrespectful language he has used it can go to that extent of analyzing the language style and then make a sentiment curve also for each party and you are writing a response that letter also it can analyze and your own letter and then it can um, it, it can generate the uh, sentiment curve for you like uh, you and me all of us are uh, tracked by 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 google uh, all over the social media and all these companies are having a psychometric profile of all of us we know it but we are ignoring it we can't escape it also like that how uh, the companies are making a psychometric analysis a psychometric profile of each of us what brand you are using what brand you are liking which phone you are using which uh, traveling mode you go which places you travel frequently which restaurant you eat what kind of food do you eat all these are analyzed and then they, we it is there in our psychometric profile someone is watching it to, to it's called business analytics they say the name business analytics but uh, the purpose is they provide a psychometric uh, profile of us so that the customer specific product advertisement will come to your phone and they will come so this is uh, business analytics the same thing we can apply uh, to draw a sentiment curve where it is used uh, in case uh, if a contractor is uh, uh, scoring very low in the uh, the sentiment uh, curve you don't want to do business with him in future so if the contractor is having a very high profile high curve of uh, sentiment curve so maybe in future projects you can the contract can be rated accordingly and future similar project when you are trying to do it from the database the 
can't, the computer can recommend some contractors, five contractors, 10 contractors who have already performed well with you in the past. So this may be one of the contractors. If your sentiment curve is very good, and then this contractor stands the choice to become in the top five contractor uh, recommended by the computer. So to that extent, uh, we can go, these are the opportunities available. And this is one uh, screenshot I told you that uh, the uh, purpose-centric dashboard you can generate. And then now the last part we are coming. Uh, do I have another five minutes, uh, Ashok? Uh, five minutes is there, sir. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can continue next session also, sir. Next weekend or uh, next Friday, another one hour. Because it is a very interesting, uh, the subject is, I thought uh, you will take some Q&A also as a continuous session. Yeah, we'll take okay? Q&A. I'll skip it for now. The smart contract is uh, there. You know? Yeah. And these are the, some AI-based uh, software. Little bit, you can prepare a little bit more also, sir, because uh, this subject is very much interesting. Next Friday also, we can plan one hour session. Okay. So and these are the, some of the... Lot of, uh, yeah, I saw your, uh, this thing, uh, the machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence in contracts and all. Uh, definitely, this is going to be the future. And uh, hope uh, these are being implemented in your contracts, sir, in your Saudi Arabia. Uh, not at an industrial project, it will take long time. It may not uh, come, but in building projects, yes. They are, uh, they are uh, already started. Yeah, they already started. This this software, you can see the artificial intelligence. The Oracle has developed yeah. Aconex. This is the most yeah. uh, most uh, uh, known, known software, costliest, but still okay. in Dubai, yeah. many companies are using it. In Saudi yes, Arabia, to come out, then I can process. share my screen. Okay, sir. That is okay. to come out, then only I can share. Okay, okay. 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 Okay, sir. Okay. Then, so these then are the, some of the software available in the market. Yeah. And I always end my lecture with a with a recommended list of books uh, yes, you can sir. read to enhance mm. your knowledge. Mm. These are the books I recommend. I have personally gone through all these books. And the right one is the Riba Royal Institute of British Architects. They have given contract administration guideline. This is mm -hmm. very good. You can go through it. And the bottom uh, right three books. These are uh, Fidic Form. Uh, related book. The other one is the JCT, Joint Tribunal, Joint Contracts Tribunal. Mm -hmm. The third one is the another contract form type, NEC, New Engineering Contract. Uh, now the version four is there. Uh, this this is it to come into. I, I have not gone through this book yet. Uh, and this is a very good book, very good resource for that. NEC one two three you can read. Mm -hmm. When it comes, you can I can share. This Sir, can you share if the PDF copies of NEC one two three is available? We will put for in our library. Yes, yes, also. it is available. It is with me. I can share it with you. Yeah, also. please share me. Uh, yes, this is a contract the, form. Yeah, whatever the PDF form available, you should share. Yeah. The basic thing PDF is will worldwide be used now. And JCT Pardon is NEC are only UK based, very rarely used outside UK, but mostly in UK, big contract they use NEC. Road okay. contract they are using NEC also. Okay, because here infrastructure projects are more, we can share this with our audience also. So that uh, they can also read this kind of a books and enhance their talent. Okay. Yeah. So I wind up my case. I hope I have taken uh, more than a little bit more time. Not an yes, issue. Five minutes sir. more. Sorry yeah, for yeah. that. This so not an issue, sir. Thank Actually, you, CMTA, for giving me an opportunity once once more opportunity to engage with uh, young engineers and then share my experience, whatever I have. We are blessed with you as for a another expert. opportunity in future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the students are lucky enough to uh, listen to your program through online uh, mode in Zoom as well as in YouTube. Nearly 100 plus participants were there and they are attending this as well as uh, the video format also available. Who were uh, could not able to uh, attend this program, they can watch a little later also. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for your time. And uh, uh, now Suresh Ramaya, sir, our guest lecture is available. Uh, he is gay, going to share uh, his program, upcoming program. Next week, he is uh, planning to conduct a program on construction finishes. Uh, Suresh, sir, uh, Sivaraman, yeah. sir, is there. You can yeah, see. yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah sir. he was listening past half an hour your session. <laughs> hi, sir. Hi. hi. Glad to meet you. And it was a wonderful presentation of yours. Thank you. Thank you. So, and uh, we could get a lot of insights on the advanced engineering things, what is happening abroad. I think India is still lacking in a lot of things, sir. 
to uh, implement here pmc role itself is not being understood by the people they are wasting lot of money for other works rather than appointing a pmc on board i think that is a tendency of our builders in india i think it will take another 15 20 years for these people to realize it will change i are. see uh, earlier than that yeah yeah no they should realize what is the importance of a quality management role in a project as i am also from a pmc background but i am not a pmc certified guy but i have got quite good experience i worked in synergy and sicon in the higher levels and uh, i got a lot of working exposure as a project management consultant sir yeah good to know that sir so, and uh, i'm handling finishes on behalf of cmta this is uh, my 14th webinar i presented today to jnn engineering college so i wanted to give some insights what all we are teaching in our finishes program <clears throat> go ahead go ahead this. yes sir so welcome you all uh, this is our uh, cnpa construction management program sorry the logo has changed i just changed in the next presentation sir ashok sir excuse me sure, 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 yeah so this is construction management training institute uh, started 3 years back <clears throat> under the leadership of ashok and we have been doing successful training online training courses and offline training courses also in 35 40 engineering colleges and uh, this is one of the important role which comes into scenario in a building when they are going to hand over so i am handling this course and uh, i have been teaching this uh, methodology uh, for uh, construction finishes so this is in the recent uh, program which concluded today i think i have ended my program today all five days we were done and uh, there were about uh, 70 to 80 participants from jnn engineering college shimoga it, it was a offline schedule but we since we couldn't meet the session to go go because of covid situation we couldn't go in person and uh, i finished my course online only so people were happy and uh, we have given them the notes inputs everything so there is a good feedback also from them so this is our certifications what we have from different institutes where association of civil engineering association like membership we have and we have approved uh, from the state council the technical body from new delhi we have also approved from narrate co and other things that logos are not added i'll try to add that tomorrow so this is the courses what we are doing in finishes so day one we are covering block work methodology in that we will tell you regarding the different type of block works and their characteristics importance of screed bed concrete to avoid leakage of water marking procedure from the starter course till the finishes then block testing procedures we do the calculation of quantity per square meter and the rate analysis portion of it and details of 1 is to 6 cement mortar proportion and 1 is to 4 cement mortar proportion which is being used in the toilet areas importance of curing in block works how to avoid wastes in block work this is our trump card we are teaching all these aspects methodologically so this method will help you lot to know the basic construction management procedure in constructions so that you can save a lot of material if it is a huge project you will save in lakhs actually even if the if the project value is 30 40 crores 10% wastage also will account to huge value so that's why we advise all the young engineers and experienced people can join our course so this has been streamed almost uh, 14th uh, presentation which has been streamed all over india so i'll be doing another presentation from 23rd onwards <clears throat> that's why ashok sir called me to introduce this program to all you people so the day 2 will be covering the plastering methodology that is regarding the internal plastering thickness what we follow and the different grade of proportions what is being followed so usually we use a uh, different methodology to minimize the thickness of water with the pull marks so we will tell you the entire mixing procedure and preparation of mixed design for plastering different proportion we tell the importance of volumetric box which is very much essential to maintain quality to avoid cracks transferring of bull from beam to the floor areas and how the thickness can be managed efficiently importance of hacking of all the acc structures and their locations and how to avoid half block wastages during mechanic using that we are using half block that is called as queen closer that will have a lot of importance you can see a lot of material correction of plastering thickness at base levels we will tell you and importance of curing in plastering and the maintenance of curing this for 10 days which can give you a lot of strength for your structure importance of covering of chasing areas 
with arpita mesh to avoid cracks and data as a backup sheet and checklist for works and how to avoid dead matter during plastering works we use a mixing tray in the central area wherever you want to do the activity that can save a lot because that removing the dead matter itself will cost you 4 rupees per square feet which will be wasting about 4 to 6 thousand rupees for flat and how to set uh, check the silt content of sand at site location and day 3 we will be covering <clears throat> vitrify flooring how to prepare the surface for tile flooring including transfer of levels then testing procedure tiles at site location and screed corrections if any before the start up work fixing the bull mark for the base mortar thickness 30 mm which is required and how to carry on the levels from the corridor to the inside areas transfer of levels and preparation of marking of tiles laying through architectural drawing cut tile method and true tile method how they follow in project for an infinity view and marking of tile laying layout at projects with the center line method right angle methods there are few procedures usage of granite bands at tile drop areas to at attached toilets in the balconies to balconies and also in the threshold areas importance of tile spaces in flooring and dadding works and importance of curing and curing time for tile laying works and other things then day 4 i'll be covering you the marking of levels so marking of levels and laying methods okay dadding importance of rough coat of plaster in vertical walls the importance of cut tiles and full tiles marking as per the drawing which is required <coughs> sorry and how to demarcate the wet and dry areas importance of draw the this in drop in wet and dry areas usage of granite bands in the door threshold areas and balconies importance of epoxy grouting in the corners joint jointing areas how to treat the door area and window areas properly importance of corner pvc bands which is used in the tiling areas important waterproofing checking before the start of tiling activity then phe services drawing to be checked and interpolation of phe drawings during the dadding works rate analysis backup sheet for both tiling methods and method statement for tiling works so this we have got methodology even for your flooring work and also dadding work both can be explained in detail and day 5 i'll be covering the painting methodology so the painting importance of primer and putty application different type of paints used in the industry application of paint and different surfaces quality control checks then checking of your uh, waterproofing uh, areas weather proof paints for external surface then importance of epoxy painting in the water tight areas then protection of other works during the painting works then coverage of painting per square meter and its calculations application of non rust painting application in fabrication areas we use epoxy primer and epoxy base paints precaution measures following during the painting process there at the protection measures what is required and quality control checks during the process of construction and rate analysis backup sheets so these are all the different topics what you are going to cover then we are going to cover even the metal management procedures how you can save material in each and every activity in the comparison of rates with the supply of rate and the different comparison with the comparative states metal check procedures then stacking out storage of metals in the yard properly provide wastages maintenance of stock registers and supply indent from the engineers how to maintain and do, how to reconcile the material during the construction operations checking of ledger site office records and material supply and bop backup sheets for all material components used in the project before the start of material before the start and the completion of task in the works so reuse of construction materials and its importance and how to reuse the wastage material in the sunken areas and all so all this material procedure methodology will be taught in detail during our five days course so kindly enroll yourself i think we are doing some more courses like construction costing management planning management highway engineering then construction procurement engineering then construction interior management then construction quality management then uh, we have got drones this thing and uh, artificial intelligence course also and beams so all these software skills are also being taught in our this thing uh, cmta institute so kindly contact our office for further details if anything is required and we can do that and uh, we can just teach you so thank you for your time sir
hope the participants have got some insight on what finishes courses are going on in our uh, institute they can enroll and this will be a wonderful course for you because finishes has got lot of demand in construction industry thank you sir thank you sir thank you thanks for your uh, uh, sharing your uh, course to our audience yes uh, definitely the people will be who are interested yes in uh, enroll for this program i can share the link yes uh, sir to uh, the, uh, in the, through this uh, youtube channel yes. as well as in the uh, other uh, platform uh, yes through, uh, through mails and uh, this thing or yes. you can follow our linkedin page also the program yes, poster sir. and other details will be available uh, okay. thanks uh, suresh sir uh, sivraman sir uh, suresh sir has uh, actually uh, since with us the past 3 years he has trained more than 3000 engineers on construction finishes this particular program yes yes we didn't meet yeah. him i have spoken to him already last time yeah, yeah. yes he yeah, is yeah, act, yeah. active yes, now to the students uh, student level also we are doing this program online program the offline earlier we were doing but uh, finishes uh, we could not able to take the students in the projects and all yeah. again the number of cases are rising in bangalore so oh, okay. we are uh, doing in online only every month one program lot of working professionals and uh, unemployed people who are searching for jobs uh, they are attending and uh, he is giving good interview questions also for the audience uh, they are cracking the interviews also with uh, sir sir this thing rate analysis and all uh, most of the uh, interviews they ask these questions sir how do yeah, you yeah. do the rate okay. analysis sir? how to read the boq what is the procedure he is telling the right procedure what is do's and don'ts in the construction especially focused on construction finishes is doing sir yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's uh, so, we are uh, having a program on 16 to 20 years so i invited him so that he can share his information to the audience uh, to, uh, this month we have uh, three programs sir uh, one is uh, construction finishes we are having 16 to 20 and yeah. the green buildings also we are doing with uh, mr ramanujam sir yes ramanujam sir is a green building professional that is a five day workshop between uh, 26 uh, to 31st we are doing okay. for the final year student of soma engineering college of technology and then uh, digital construction we are doing for the ams college second time in this month the first time we okay. have completed in Good. the first week at the ams college chennai they wanted this uh, digital construction in depth for five days uh, the artificial intelligence and 3d printing all the, the basic things we are providing the students so that who are okay, interested good. they can do their masters or do their research on particular subject they can upskill themselves to the next level in the interested areas that is the objective yeah time is already up uh, nearly we have taken uh, nearly two hours we uh, okay. 4 o'clock now it is 5:50 i hope uh, okay. the session was uh, very much uh, interesting and i request the sivaraman sir to continue the se- uh, session next uh, friday also because he needs a good time <laughs> you have to stop me uh, new information sir is bringing yeah uh, yeah definitely good, this will be the... useful for the audience sir. Yeah, i request yeah. you sir uh, next friday i have not at all planned after seeing your lecture i thought i have not done my justice i have given one hour only <laughs> i should have given two weeks to you so that uh, this particular topic you can come for a conclusion and after then they can take it up uh, way forward so yeah, it is okay. nice sir because no, i have already completed everything except that uh, smart contract Okay, only one sir. slide two slides were there uh, after other than that i have completed almost everything oh okay fine sir if time only permits we can do sir if time permits huh? we can do next week uh, for the audience uh, one hour session with uh, some uh, specific topics also yes yes we will we'll plan i'll yeah. I'll, t- i'll confirm you by no issue, monday sir, i'll confirm is, uh, check your schedule and let me know and uh, tuesday i request you to be a keynote speaker for our uh, the digital construction program okay Okay, sir. Yeah, send sure. me the link. Yeah, yeah, I will do it. I will do it. Will. Uh, so, and uh, can you share the link for the green building? And because next time Definitely, I uh, go sir. to India, I want to become a green member in process. IGBC also. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah, you can attend the program, uh, sir. Here, can you can take place. that course exam, sir. Once you do it, I think Ashok sir is a panel member. I think you can get it okay. done fast. Yeah, we can. Because we can I had the opportunity to to work with uh, Jordan Green Building Council. Okay. they are asking me why you are not a member in uh, indian green building council you are from india <laughs> they are asking 
sir uh, i will send the form to you kindly fill it up and i will uh, see that you are green building member and uh, you okay. can take the courses and you will get uh, updates regularly your email id will be added to the id igbc database and you will be regularly getting the paid and uh, as well as the free webinar details course okay right thank you okay sir okay thank sir you, nice sir. meeting you sir thank you <laughs> thank you nice thank meeting you. you also yes sir uh, thank, thank you everyone you. for this uh, program attending this program